welcome everybody to what's up bolts i'm fernando ramirez that sunglass dawn and hat Let's wearing go. son of a gun is dan and dago go what's up dan how are you doing hey i'm excellent because let me tell you something we got a nice little surprise for everybody today i'm hyped up so let's freaking go, dude. I don't know. I'm excited. Know what... I'm excited to talk some chargers, especially with one of my boys. He needs no introduction. Uh... Is cooking. There he is. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Yeah. My, my Vegas drinking buddy. Let's <laughs> go. Yeah. All right. The legend himself. <laughs> on the program sir jeffrey miller la times shout out to him how you doing jeff so you don't I need me to present anybody dan does it uh so well i am doing really good now i wasn't doing so good 30 seconds ago but now great <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna open some cold ones and let's just keep going dude we'll let it run we'll see what comes out. why not let's get some truth out here <laughs> uh yeah speaking, speaking of speaking that of I truth, Jeff. Uh, Oh yeah, go for it. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, mine's a stupid thing, so we can keep going. Don't worry about it. <laughs> well, before we start off with good, with other stuff, you can you can say your stupid thing. Oh, I was gonna say. Oh yeah, speaking of some truth, I took flack last time, Jeff. I took flack last time on this program for speaking some unwanted truths when I said the son of Odin, <laughs> God of Lightning, Justin Herbert is better than Philip Rivers. I got some flack for that one. People were not happy. <laughs> They were not happy, but I mean, wow. we don't, we don't need to open that can of worms right now. We can just move on. That is uh that's quite a, uh, quite a take. <laughs> that's my guy. Hey, that's, Let me tell you something. If I had his number, I'd be like Jim Harbaugh too. I'd be texting him. How's your day going? I just want to hear from you. Are you okay? Do you have a brisket today, Justin? <laughs> Jeff, uh, speaking of which, I know you have something to tell Daniel, what you told me at USC about, his performance a couple uh, weeks ago that you caught on uh, on the show with uh, his shirt, his red shirt, and everything. Oh. The the, uh, the hype. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, I was laughing so hard. The uh, <laughs> the, the the what 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 <laughs> that was that was absolute gold. I love that. You you should be making a lot of money doing that. I'm not. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Like I am dead serious. Like you hey, should you know be, a, may, you should be able to pay your bills doing that. You're, you're so good. At it. You're too kind to me, Sir Jeffrey. You're too kind to me. I appreciate that. Now you know what's funny? I forget half of the time what I say on the show. I'm just like I'm in it. You know what I mean? I'm in it. When the sunglasses come on, the lights are yeah, and the lights are on, and the red lights on, it's on, dude. It's a completely different beast. You know what I'm Jeff, saying? Jeff, you know you know what's funny? You know how everybody goes and looks at the schedule when it first comes out, and they're like. Okay, so the Chargers play these guys or the Rams play these guys, stuff like that. Daniel looks at it to see when the Chargers play in Vegas because he knows <laughs> that he has to go to that uh, That's for our, our tradition, our yearly tradition. I kid you not, I'm hoping it's the same thing, right? Where it's like a Thursday like night game. We're done with finals that same day. An hour later after I get off of work, I'm out of flight going to Vegas for a nice little two, three days over there. That is the uh, that you know, NFL can have Thanksgiving and all this other crazy yeah. stuff. That's the tradition they need to keep going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's December. December in Vegas. Yeah, Amen. exactly. Hey, then we're back to the barbershop on country music night, dude. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. Jeff, uh, Jeff, you were you were down in uh, Orlando, I believe it was. You weren't at Disney World. You were at the uh, owners' meetings and. Uh, what was uh, what was some of your biggest takeaways? I mean, obviously, we know about the hip drop tackle. We know about the kickoff rules. Uh, you guys obviously spoke to uh, Jim Harbaugh and everything. And by the way, his picture where he's front and center, right in between Andy Reid and his brother, I thought that was uh, funny when they took those pictures. But just what were some of your takeaways from down there? Um, yeah, it, it was, uh, you know, Jim. Um, Jim's not going to give us a whole lot as media yeah. members we're not going to get a ton of insight from him um we've discovered that pretty quickly in his tenure here um <laughs> so we're gonna uh it's gonna be it, it, he's uh he's gonna be a little bit of a challenge in terms of trying to figure out what's really going on it's kind of like the jj mccarthy stuff right now um <laughs> you know he loves jj mccarthy now 
does he love him as much as he's letting on and he's, and he's, or is he suggesting and saying he's the best quarterback in the draft? And, uh, <laughs> you know, everybody you talk to around the chargers who was involved in his hire, they all talked about, this is what he is. He's real authentic. There, there's nothing fake. I, I don't know. I mean, I, we're going to find out. Cause I, does he really think JJ McCarthy is the best quarterback in the draft? You know, uh, is or is he just hyping his guy? And also, let's face it, he, you know, if they pump up another quarterback, it helps the Chargers. So, um, yeah, the, really, if you're talking about like just Charger related stuff, I mean, that the thing, it's it's going to be hard to to get a whole lot from from Jim Harbaugh. You know, as long as he's the coach of the Chargers, I don't think he's going to change. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, we're still trying to figure out exactly what to, you know, the things he says publicly, how how we're supposed to take those, whether that's really genuine, that's really what he is, or, you know, is he kind of playing the hype game just like everybody is this time of year? Well, uh, real quick, before I get to my next point, uh, somebody's asking, where's Hilberto? Uh, he had a little <laughs> bit of a, he probably had a long night. It was his birthday yesterday. He might've had a long night. So we're going to let him rest uh, for the time. Oh yeah. Being. I don't know if you know uh, that Jeff, I got, I got tongue lash yesterday cause it was somebody's birthday and I was just, just a wee bit late to the recording or to the show because I was over here working. Forgive me. You know what I'm saying? I got a job to Dan, do. Forgive Dan me. got a new job, Jeff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got a new do coaching what? job. Yeah, oh. it's at a it's at an undisclosed location, my alma mater. <laughs> so uh, I'm the new varsity O-line coach over there. So, yeah, it's, it's been kind of a, a wild past couple days. So well, good. So yeah, like the, he's like the Jeffersons. He's moving on up. Exactly. Yeah, that's, good. that's a good deal, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Well, now I don't have to leave campus ever, so that's awesome. I can just hang out there the whole time, so it's going to be awesome. Evening, yeah, all. Jim and Herbert not giving the media hey, a lot of answers. <laughs> this is our boy from Ireland, I think. I think that oh, is our yeah. boy from Ireland. Shout out to you, my guy. Hey, I was yeah, going to tell yeah. you one thing. Very I well love said. the gassing up of uh, JJ because, like, he's he's the best quarterback. Da, da, da. Who else could win a natty without throwing the football, Jeff? He All he had to do was <laughs> turn around and hand it off. You know what I'm saying? He was Jim was playing 4D chess. He was saving his real oh, skills God. for the NFL. We're just waiting on it. Well, I just loved how he, he said he, he he thinks he's the best quarterback in the draft. He he plays quarterback the best. That the else yeah. did, you, did you catch him say he played because he kind of he tweaked it. It wasn't not that he's the best quarterback, but he's the best at playing quarterback. Which I don't know how that's different than being the best quarterback, but that in Jim's world, that apparently there's a difference. Well, Jeff, it's like it's like Mike is as valuable as any other player Thank on this. Thank you. Team. I was about to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> we should we should make you a Compa shirt that says everyone sees their paychecks or something like that. That would be hilarious. That was a quote, I think, right? They all see yeah. what they're getting paid, dude. What are yeah. we doing? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, but Jeff, obviously, um, uh, well, Josue has a quick question for you. Uh, can we get thoughts on a Herbert led offense now? No Keenan, no Lindsley or Williams takes a lot of leadership, uh, out of there. So, uh, Jeff is, has, uh, has Harbaugh talked about any of that or, um, or just kind of what, what's your thought process on what Josue is, uh, asking? Yeah, well, they're going to get, uh, they're going to, you know, they're, they're not done with the receiver. They're going to get to another, you know, they're going to, they're going to get some more receivers. There's no doubt about that. Um, I, I don't, uh, it's kind of one of those situations. Let's wait and see what it looks like when we get to the, get to training camp. I mean, some things still have to shake out a little bit, but, uh, you know, I think, you know, Corey Lindsley's loss is huge. Like we can't, that, 100%. That, you know, that doesn't get enough attention. I don't think, I don't think we wrote, talked about it enough last year, I, even no matter how much we wrote or talked about it, that's a big deal. So that one, you know, that one's going to hurt, you know, Obviously, they're going to, you know, Keenan and Mike's production. That's uh, they're, they're going to have to figure out a way to replace that. And the thing is, with this, uh, I, the way I'd put it right now, they lost their top two receivers, right? Does anybody sitting here right now, do, does anybody think they're going to win f five or fewer games next season? Oh, no. No, right? no, 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 no. You know what? I, yeah, no, speaking of that. I, no, I mean, hold on. Let, 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 let okay, Jeff finish. Let Jeff finish. So the point is, like, you know, they've lost their top two receivers. You know, obviously Mike missed most of the year anyway last year. Yeah. yeah. They're, I think everybody thinks, and probably rightly so, they're going to be better right, even right now. So, like, <laughs> I, it, it hurts losing Keenan Allen, obviously, but 
you know, you see it all the time in sports where, you know, teams get shuffled around. Some of the best guys leave and the, the team gets better. It causes yeah. other things, you know, other guys, you know, we'll see what Gus Edwards, you know, how he affects it. We'll see, you know, if they truly are going to be a run the ball, you know, which, which, which Harbaugh has done, um, you know, it, it has stopped. You know, he's a defense run the ball kind of guy. That's what they're going to do. You know, they, you know, they're, I, I think we all expect them to be better, even, even without those two guys. So, you know, let's let it, let's let the, you know, the, the rest of the off season kind of shake out here, see where the roster is after the draft, after, uh, you know, when all the free agents are gone and, and kind of before we really uh, try to figure out exactly what this is going to look like. But I, you know, I, the bottom line is I think everybody thinks these guys are going to be better, you know, no matter what happens between now and the, the end of, uh, you know, the start of training camp at the end of July. Well, Jeff, you know what it is on in in January. It's they better hire Harbaugh. It's Harbaugh or nothing. Yeah, they yeah. hire Harbaugh. February, they better get the GM right. They better get the GM right. And then now March, it's been they traded Keenan Allen. What is going on? So like, yeah, you know, every month it's a little bit of something different. But that's what's gonna happen. And I think that Jim is completely different from anything the Charger fans have ever experienced. Uh, I mean, I talked to Vernon Davis at uh, on Radio Row, and he said the guy's different. Like. He, like people should expect something different. And some of the people that I talked to that know Jim or played for Jim or have coached with Jim, they all say that he, it's 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 something different. You you don't know what to uh, you don't know what to expect. So it's going to be a little bit of everything. I told Dan and I've said it to Gilbert before. I think this year is going to be more of a fill out the team, a little bit of a money ball situation where low contracts try and get like their stamp into this and kind of get the guys that obviously don't fit what they want out and bring in kind of more of their guys. So that's the way I've kind of sensed that they're going to do. They're not going to spend big amounts of money on free agents. It's all going to be low risk, high reward uh, kind of guys. I don't know if uh, that's the same kind of vibe you're getting. Yeah. You know, their, their financial situation is really put, they were in a really bad spot and now yeah. you know, they're, they're better, but they're still not in a great spot. I mean, they, you know, they're going to be able to do some stuff, but, you know, not not the kind of moves that uh, I think they. You know, maybe next off season we'll see them be you know be in a situation where they can be more aggressive with some of these high end guys um, in free agency. But um, the thing is that you know, if, if this feels different, feels weird. You know, the the situation with Keenan, the stuff they're doing. You know, and the fact that you know Joe Ortiz, the GM, keeps talking about this roster flexibility and building depth and all this stuff. And they're actually not just talking about it; they're actually doing it. That's part of that Keenan. You know, big, the the whole thing with Keenan was that gave them the flexibility to do some more stuff and to actually build up more of the back end of the roster instead of this top heavy thing that we've seen the last few years. If that all feels different and strange to Charger fans, that's good because this team hasn't won anything in six and a half decades, right? Let them know. So, Let them know. So. If, if if you're un, if it makes you uncomfortable that they traded away your the best receiver probably in the history of the franchise in the in for the sake of trying to get better top to bottom, good okay good <laughs> because comfort and being comfortable and zero Super you Bowl Jeff. one Super Bowl you know that's trash. <laughs> you know, they, they should this is okay like it's all right for Charger fans to be a little maybe on edge a little bit right now what's going on. Well, hey, guess what? This is what change feels like. What it looks like. Good, positive, change. yeah, positive change. Yeah, if it if it makes you a little uncomfortable, that's probably good. You know, that, that's probably yeah. a good thing. Dan, you know what's funny? Last week when we were at USC, I, I I hadn't seen Jeff in a while, so I was excited to see him. And he texted me when I was at the Canelo press conference. He texted me, "Please tell me you're going to the USC pro day." And I was like, <laughs> "Yes." He's like, "Thank God I get to see you." So Eric and I are standing there watching whoever was on the field. And all I hear is Ramirez. I'm like, is something, nobody's calling for me. And I turn and I look outside of the gate, it's Jeff. And he's all <laughs> excited. I'm like, yeah. And he comes running in and I was like, yeah, big hug and everything. So Legend. I love having Jeff on. And, and uh, obviously he's a, uh, He's a great guy, and and we love Jeff. He's he's one yeah. of our favorites, one hundred percent. I was going to tell you, by the way, I'm totally with you in the sense that, like, that's what I've been telling you know my boss and other charter fans that I talk to. I'm like, what are you worried about? 
we got Jim Harbaugh and the son of Odin. Something's going to cry. Like the day before the Keenan Allen news, I made a bet they're going to make the playoffs. I still think after the Keenan Allen stuff, they're going to make the playoffs. I'm not worried about it. They're going to figure this out. He didn't come to lose, Jeff. That's what I keep believing. That's what I'm going to hang on to until I see what's on the field. But, you know, I'm not worried about it at all. Yeah, I mean, if anybody deserves benefit of the doubt, it's this guy. 100%. You know, he's turned it around. He's done it repeatedly. And he's won. Now, don't forget, the one thing I would remind people of, he got to Michigan. And for after three yeah. years, remember the story was he, he can't beat Michigan State. Yeah. Think about that. that. That was He lost, I think, two of the first three to Michigan State. And that was the story. And I mean, that was, you know. That's when you can't beat Michigan State. Then it was he can't beat Ohio State. Yeah. And then it was he can't win a playoff game. Well, he ended up doing it all, but it took a while. It took nine years yeah. for that to happen. So I'm not, yeah. you know, I hope for your sake and the your bets that they do make the playoffs. But if they don't, <laughs> you know, it, it might take, you know, it, I'm not sure he's going to be able to do this, what he did with the Niners and take it from a, a lousy yeah. team to, Zero three to 60. Straight, yeah. you know, three straight conference, uh, you know, get, uh, conference finals. But I, it's going to turn – he's going to win. I don't think there's any yeah. question. He, he is going to win, and I think – I don't think there's any question they're going to give him the time to do it. Um, and so, I, yeah, I, I think uh, – I mean, if I were – I'd be excited if you're a Charger fan and you're bummed about Keenan Allen, I'd still be excited because, like what you're saying, and I just they're, – they're going to be – you know, they're going to be good. And it might, it might take a year. It might take two you years. You got to trust the process. That's what it is. It's a new thing. You got to trust the yeah. process. And going off of Dean, Dean's comment, it was a, a, a wing dinner, I bet. And Jeff is my witness. I don't gamble. We stay at the bar when we go to Vegas. We don't gamble. Uh, Jeff, you want to see how excited Dan gets? Watch. Uh, well, Jeff, you were there, but I still want to play this for him. Uh, Dan, listen to this. The oh, offensive yeah. line here is, is, is important. If I ask you the question of like what position group depends on no other position group to be good, but every other position group depends on them to be good, you know, what position group is that? Offensive line. They're not relying on any other position group to be good. They go out and they're good. But yet every other position group relies on the offensive line to be good. And, and, and then the D-line – They'll like they'll be the ones that argue back. Ah, we don't, you know, we don't need the offensive line to be good. Do you? Do you like? Do you like when a, when the offense has a twelve play drive? And, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. You're right. You know, it's like. So yeah, that building that, you know, building that, uh, you know, kind of offensive line. That's exciting. Let's go, dude. They're going to be so physical this year. It's going to be so unnatural to them. It's going to be amazing, dude. Like, I'm still of the mindset. Like, I remember when they hired Greg Roman, they're like, oh, like, you know, we have Justin Herbert. He's just going to want to run the football. Da, 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 da. I'm like, imagine Justin Herbert behind a competent offensive line in a run game. The guy's going to throw for 10,000 yards, Jeff. It's going to be it's going to be easy pickings, dude. I'm not even worried about it. You know All what right. I mean? Like. <laughs> back to reality just jeff what what i mean what did you make of uh when jim because i know everybody that that and what you said at the beginning his love of jj mccarthy it could be a two-way a two uh, like a two-way uh two-way whatever you want to call it but he could be hyping up jj but also minnesota come and get our fifth pick and let us trade down and and maybe help our offensive line or maybe somebody jump up ahead of us grab them and then maybe marvin harrison jr i mean that, that's the thing and that's what you're talking about jeff the unknown we really don't know what jim harbaugh and joe hortiz are thinking we can guess we can speculate but it's just uh there's a lot of different factors that come with what that fifth overall pick kind of is so let me give you the uh behind the scenes a little bit on that the other day when it was a couple days ago monday morning when he said that about the offensive line so at the combine, I we all the beat writers who were there, we all got like 20, 25 minutes with with Jim one on one just to kind of get to know th thing. I asked a question about Justin Herbert, and he gave the exact same answer. What <laughs> position group? He looks it's, it's me, him, and his son, little son Jack, in the room at this this dopey room at the uh, Weston in, in uh, Indianapolis. 
and I ask about Justin Herbert, and he gives he goes down the offensive line. And he, he does the exact same thing. What? Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. What <laughs> offensive group? What what position group doesn't rely on anybody else to be good, but everybody relies on them being good? And he waits and looks. So he started doing that. So Daniel Popper asked the question about the offensive line, and he does what position group? Let me ask you a question. So he goes to the, the exact. It was the exact same thing. He delivered it the exact same way. And he went down that. He, it, I was sitting here thinking to myself, am I the only one who's heard this already? I've talked to him twice. I've heard that twice. <laughs> so that's Did the, you answer the question, though, or no? Did you answer it, or he just – So he's looking was, at Popper, and Popper yeah. said, well, offensive line. Obviously, that's where he's going with it, right? So, But the point of it is, is this guy – like, you always hear people talk about him with him. He's all he, It's all ball. He's all football. It's all he cares about. That's all that's on his mind. He's got this one-track mind. And so he he – he has these stories like I've heard that one. I've heard, there, there's like three things he's I've heard twice now. Both times I've talked to him, he's said the exact same little like it's like this little minute long thing he launches into. I've heard three of them now at least twice in two two times. So I he so that whole thing with the offensive line he that's that is him 100. percent Like he really that's not he's not making that up. Like that is in his brain. And that's not coming out. That's ingrained in his brain. That will always be there. He's always going to believe that. And so I guess, you know, look for them to draft a, probably a tackle, right? Nah. At number five, what do you think they're going to do at number five? That's a question in the chat. What do you think they're going to do at number uh, five? Right now, if I had to guess, uh, I think they're going to trade and move back. Um, and then I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I think that depending on who, if they do trade back, who who's there, uh, what they'll do. Um, but I mean, Without Keenan now, they they got to get a wide receiver pretty high. If not with that first pick, it's got to be their second pick probably, right? I mean, they're going to have to yeah. get one. You know, there's a lot of depth, we're told, that wide receiver. And a lot of, there's a lot of depth on your offensive line, too. So we'll see how it all shakes out. But if I had to guess right now on, what is this, March 27th, uh, I'm going to say they're going to trade away. back. A month I'm going to say they're going to trade back, and they'll try to get another pick and try to do, you know, try to get an, an extra player as opposed to maybe staying five and, you know, it, now who knows? We'll see how the quarterback thing shakes out and who's there at five. If, if they, they may decide to hang on to it. And if, if Marvin Harrison's there, maybe they take him. Um, it, by all accounts, I mean, you know, they, they love him like everybody does. Obviously they played against him a lot, so they know him well. Yeah, so very well. Yeah. They, they Har, you know, Harbaugh played against him and Jesse Minter and those guys, they know him. They know how he is to try to defend him. So they, yeah. um, I could see that being a fit. Well, you know, sitting here right now, a month away, I, I'm going to guess they're going to trade out. Trade out. What do you guys think? I, I I've been telling Dan lately that I think they're going to trade out and go get uh, right here. Um, they said if they're going to get a tackle, let it be an actual right tackle instead of converting alt. That's oh, what I totally I agree too. with that. Yeah, I think I think it's hard to convert a guy who, and especially because I spent a little bit of time around Joe Alt back when I went to uh, South Bend for a bit, and um, and Joe really loved the left tackle position. So I, I mean, he could have changed and everything, but back then he was like, I love left tackle. I love what I get to do at left tackle. This that so. And, and yeah, we've seen Tristan Wharfs and Panay Sewell being able to do it, but there's a lot more cases of them not being able to yeah, do it. It's not so, easy. Um, it might be easier to just trade down, get the left or get the an actual right tackle. And then with that 23rd pick, I mean, you can you can essentially do anything you want because a couple of picks later in the second round, you get another high second round draft pick. So you could literally come away with three really good players uh in the first few picks in this draft, but I mean, we've seen with Baltimore, Jeff, they've moved around. Like, those guys like to move around in the draft. I, I wouldn't doubt Joe Hortiz is kind of similar where he moves up, he moves down. They do a lot of different things and maybe get picks. But I, I could see them 100% moving down and taking a, a a right tackle here and and really solidifying the left tackle, the right tackle. And then, obviously, you have to work a little bit in the interior. Like, is Jamari Sawyer going to be your right guard? Um, obviously they signed Bozeman and, uh, obviously they're going to try and I'm sure coach up, um, Jesus, uh, Zion, uh, Zion, oh, Zion so, Johnson. Yeah. Zion yeah. Johnson. Zion Johnson. So yeah. I, I really think that the, what they want to do in year one is solidify their offensive line with most of their pieces. But, uh, I think getting a right tackle would actually benefit them in the long run because, 
You know how good of pass rushers they are. You've seen, you've seen Chris Jones. Chris Jones in critical situations last year, he would move over to tack or to uh, to the edge, and he would take. He did it against uh, the Buffalo Bills. He did it against the 49ers. He the, guys like that they move around and they do different things. You can't be really good on your left side and be terrible on your right side, and I'm sure Jim uh, knows that. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, they. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked at all if they they do take a tackle with their first the first pick they whenever it is. Yeah. Just because it, you know, they they they've watched plenty of tape, and I'm sure they know exactly what they've got. And uh, and I, I don't know, I, you know, Trey's had some injuries the last couple of years, which I, I think has really hurt his growth and his development. Um, so, um, I you know, I, th- this guy he is committed to, to you know to running the ball and to playing that kind of kind of football, you know, that tougher brand of football, and that you know that you you have to have an offensive line to be able to do that. So. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see how it shakes out, but that, you know, I'm sure that they, I mean, them, the idea of them taking a tackle very high is, is very real. Yeah. yeah. No, but and, and I'm going like to, I'm going to go the opposite of that. offensive line. Go ahead. I'm, I'm going to go on the opposite of that. I think if it's, you know, one of these supposed generational wide receivers still there at five, I think they would probably take them, especially with the four, with the thought in the back of their mind that it's like, they don't have Keenan. They don't have Mike. They really need someone on the field because obviously Quentin struggled, but I mean, we're going to figure out what happens this year under the new regime. Josh is solid, but he disappears sometimes and he's had injury concerns and things like that. And especially like my biggest thing is this, right? Like even if he doesn't trade back, I think Harbaugh has the greatest advantage because he's known most of these guys probably since high school because he's been recruiting them following them and everything else so these next few drafts are going to be crucial so if he could build it you know like uh like some of these teams had through the draft and just pluck a few free agent vets here and there you know that could be huge for him for this season so especially well, for Jeff, years to come you heard what brendan rice said at the usc pro day he's like yeah I've not, he heavily recruited me coming out yeah. of uh high school exactly so so that's and, my thing that's uh, why i think like yeah especially if receivers so deep tackle so deep and everything else like they can get a few good, you know, solid receivers later. But if the generational talents are there and they're ready to go day one, they might take those and just get the other ones for depth and other things like that. Uh, I'm going to make a prediction here uh, at the end of March for the end of August that we will see these guys, the wide receiver position will be in such a situation with this team that they will they'll sign a guy or two who gets released from another team? Oh, and the guys are from here, and he's yeah. actually gonna be, they're they're going to get a guy or two who's actually going to contribute. Like he's not he won't be on the team through yeah. training camp through preseason, and yeah. but then he's going to show up. It'd be like a Sony Michelle thing a couple of years oh, ago. Right. Only the guys yeah. come in and actually he'll, he'll <laughs> actually do something. Like I promise you that there. You said it. I mean, you know, Josh Palmer's had some situations with injuries. He's had some concussion stuff. That's yeah. That should be a little concerning. I don't know what Quentin Johnson's going to end up being. I really don't. I don't think anybody knows. No. But that, I mean, right now there's there's very little in that in that at that position group. There's not much there. So I'm going to tell you. I and and Joe uh, Ortiz tells us every chance he gets that you know this free agency never doesn't end. It goes into the you know into, into the preseason, <laughs> into the training camp, and so he's he's kind of letting us all know that hey. Don't be surprised if at the end of training camp we bring in a receiver to who gets released, or or even you know they could even trade for somebody if it, depending on where they're at and you know. But I'm just going to say right now I, I bet you that ends up happening uh, at the end of training camp at the end of the preseason just before the start of the season that all of a sudden there's a guy or two here who wasn't who hasn't been here and actually ends up at, you know having a pretty significant role. And that's what I told Daniel. I'm like, look. I'm like they and and Gilbert the other day. I'm like they could totally go the Green Bay Packers route and just draft young receivers, kind of the way Green Bay has, and let them kind of go. And then yeah, also bring in a veteran. But um, I could totally see them. I mean, and, and that's what we were talking about. I was like, I could see them go Malik Neighbors fifth overall. I could see them go tackle. I could see them in the third round getting Brendan Rice. Um, another guy who Jim obviously knows well and just going with those two guys. And then obviously, like you said, bringing in a veteran or they they're, they're going to want veteran leadership at almost every position I'm sure. And they're just not going to have it right now at the receiver route. So I, I totally agree with you, Jeff. I think, I think these like 
we knew back in the I mean, we've we've known for a while that in season trades are not like at the trade deadline, there's gonna be nothing really done. Like you could basically I'm not gonna say chill out, but in the past that wasn't a thing. Now that thing could be a thing where these guys could go get somebody who's on an expiring deal or or something like that to help them improve the team. I mean, literally with these guys, any anything can really happen, especially like you said especially when Joe Hortiz is reminding you guys, hey, free agency is never over. Like, we're always going to be looking to improve the team. Yeah, well, he was talking about the other day about, you know, well, after the draft, maybe the, some guys will get released. But they, you know, some of these teams will bring in a young receiver and they might have to release a guy. So even something like that could happen. I don't know. Well, and then you have the June 1st date where people get bonuses and stuff. So oh, yeah. Yeah. people can so there, be cut. Well, there, There's going to be, you know, they're going to be active in that in that because – you know, even if they get a couple of young receivers, they're still going to, they're still going to be, there's still room to add some guys in that, uh, at that group for sure. Some guys who played and they, you know, maybe can get something out of, uh, you know, can, can give them something because they, you know, they, they need help at that position. No question about it right now. When you were down at the owners meetings, did you uh, interact with anybody else, any other coaches or was it just uh, Jim? Yeah. So the, the, this uh, meeting is uh, it's the GM's, the co- head coaches, uh, and then uh, like front office people, you know, everybody's cap guys there, um, like the, uh, you know, team president type people are there. But coaches, why, unless it's, a, you know, some of the assistants are there, like a couple of uh, um, special teams coordinators are there, you know, because of the kickoff thing was going on. So, oh my it's, God. Uh, but it's none of the uh, like. There are no, you know, most for the most part, like the coaches aren't there. The assistants. Oh, I, I, I didn't mean just charges. So, I meant like, did you go to any other tables to go roam around a little bit or no? Like, no. So uh, Andy Reid, you saw Andy Reid shirt, Hawaiian shirt, and everything. So I didn't know yeah, if you made your uh, way over there. Uh, we were all pretty locked in on Harbaugh during the uh, AFC stuff. Um, uh, we did. Uh, all of us got to a little time with Joe too. So we got to know, okay. get to know him a little bit better. And, uh, and that was nice. Uh, but it was, um, yeah, I didn't sleep enough. Uh, I will say that <laughs> uh, there it was, you know, it's, it's a lot of this networking, uh, and that ends up being you're you're staying up way too late down in the <laughs> lobby bar and you're just like the Indy, just like Indy. <laughs> and, uh, it, thankfully it's not quite as bad as Indy is, uh, but it's, well, Dan it's got to experience that a couple yeah, of years yeah. ago. Oh, yeah, Indy, yeah. Indy, when I was there, I was like, there was a uh, one guy, um, the the king of Nevada, dude, Adam Hill. He would go out till about, you know, you could only imagine, still be there every morning at eight a.m. I'm like, dude, I don't know how this guy has the stamina to do it. God you know what's funny, him, Dan? He's a Dan dog. was also like. Why would they want this in LA or anywhere else? Like this is the perfect place. To it's so have convenient. It Everything is a right around like a, a four or five mile radius. Like it's so That's convenient. Everybody, everybody said the same thing about that. If they moved it somewhere else, it would ruin it because everyone everyone loves that proximity and the convenience yeah. of it, and it's all right there. And it, I mean, yeah, you're right. So if they moved it, they would ruin it. Um. So Monday night, you know, hotel lobby, bar, loud, stupid, you know, <laughs> media, some people coming and going, you know, it, eventually it ends up being, you'll be surprised, it, it ends up being just media people, you because know, all the football people are smart enough to go to bed, and all of us idiots are standing up, <laughs> and we all look around, and it's all just us, then we all finally leave, because you realize, okay, I don't need to talk to any of these people, they're not, but... <laughs> Every one of these things, and you know, a couple of years ago at Indy, you reminded me of it, and then this year was the same thing at Indy, and then this thing this week in Orlando. There's a point in every night I can't get away from Mike McDaniel. He just he's there. Like every time I, he's there, like every, he's he never. He, every, I turn around, there he is, I, and then I go to the bathroom, there he is, and then I come out. Of the bathroom, there he is. So, I was sitting in the lobby yesterday morning. Okay. I'm in the lobby of the Ritz Carlton in uh, Orlando and I'm looking Mary. There he is. Of course, Mike McDaniel is right there. And I came to the conclusion. I think I could beat him up if I had to. (laughs) (laughs) And I say that because I I think he's actually smaller than I am. I mean, I'm not a very big person, but he is very, he's a small guy. Like he, he might be like an inch or two taller than me, but I think he's actually lighter than I am. <laughs> so I was looking at him thinking, you know, he, now he's, you know, 
I've got some years on him, so he, you know, he's going to be quicker <laughs> than me. But I, I was looking at him thinking, unless he's got some taekwondo or something that he could bust out, he might. Because he kind of has that look to him that he could have some of that stuff in his background, you know, and he could yeah. bust out some moves. But I actually thought to myself, if there's one coach in the NFL, I might be able to take it. It might be him. Hey, we at least know you have the stamina for it. You have the stamina because you're running all over the place, dude. I was going to ask you, since you and him are officially best buddies now, are you also going to lift your leg pants to show up to your calf, show off your ankles a little bit, run away from the cameras and stare? Oh, yeah. He, uh, I tell you, that, he's an interesting dude. I, uh, oh, I'm I, sure, yeah. Uh, he, he's uh, like David right there. What do you think, From He kind of looked like David right there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I'm, he, he's a uh, he is an interesting cat. There's no question about oh, it. Oh yeah. Um, no, I mean, so, that's. Can you imagine getting him and Jim Harbaugh and some of these guys in a room together? Like it would just be the the craziest thing ever. I think. I, I uh, other than like, I'd love to get all those guys in a room and to have them make them talk about something other than football and see where it goes. <laughs> Oh, they'd be quiet for four hours, dude. They wouldn't know what to talk about. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? You know what was my favorite quote coming out of that, by the way? You know, oh hey, Sean, was it hard to get, trade Russ because or cut Russ because of the dead cat? Da, 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 da. No, it just moves <laughs> on. <laughs> by the way, Jeff, I know you love going to the gym and you're a gym guy. What do you think? What do you make of this? Oh look at that. God. I don't even know why, like. This still keeps getting posted. It's ridiculous. That's Russell Wilson in the oh. Steelers like gym. What? No, no, no. He's in a Steelers shirt. Or, I think it's probably yeah. His he's own in a gym. Steelers shirt. My bad. Yeah. What? What's on his? Are those glasses? What's yeah. You <laughs> see what? Yeah, what so Shipley. Yeah. Nothing yeah. better than working out indoors with sunglasses. Yeah. Yeah. I thought hilarious. I, I, I thought he was blindfolded. I thought that was some workout technique. <laughs> Like being like blindfolded, it makes you concentrate on your form or something. Um, I think I think that is going to be. I already said on the show. I gave a huge prediction as soon as they signed him. I said if he stays on the roster for the whole season, this will be Mike Tomlin's first losing year. I'm willing to bet the uh, mortgage on it, 100. percent When they, uh, I said the same thing. When they, uh, I, I, this is like, don't be. I wouldn't be shocked one bit if Mike Tomlin isn't the coach of the Steelers next year. Like. Oh yeah, this, their quarterback situation could really blow up, and this could be this could be the the end of the no losing seasons and the end of his tenure. I mean, you know, he hasn't won a championship in like sixteen years. Yeah. Name another sport, another coach in any other sport and major yeah. four major sports who's gone sixteen years without a championship. Even and even Bill Belichick was only like, it, right? Bill was only a couple of years removed from his championship. Yeah, it's crazy. So, Fernando, you'll like this. Um, oh, I'm ready. So, uh, the other thing at the USC Media Day, the two things that got me most excited, one was seeing Fernando. <laughs> and number two, the other thing that I got all excited about was Dan Quinn. Okay? And Dan, oh. my thing with Dan Quinn, oh, yeah. dude, wear your hat like an adult. <laughs> Put your hat <laughs> on, your baseball hat straight. Don't wear your baseball hat <laughs> You're a head, now you, okay, for a defensive court, maybe you can get away with that. But now you're a head coach. Wear your hat. You know, of course, he's on the field at the USC Pro Day with his hat backwards. So, at yesterday, there he is right there. That's actual- Oh, Dan Quinn. I was thinking of Dan Campbell. I was about to say, no. why are you hating on my boy Dan Campbell? But, yeah, no. no I, Dan, I Quinn, Dan, Quinn, Dan Quinn, Quinn is right? act his age. I agree with you, yeah. So, yesterday. What's up, Nancy? In, he's Let's in smelt. the uh, – He's in the lobby. The, the again, we're at the Ritz Carlton at the, in Orlando, and there, uh, there he is. He's and he comes in. He's going to meet individually with the commanders beat writers. Like one, the same thing. Like twenty minutes, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes a piece. Like all three of them. He comes walking in, and uh, I know one of the one of their beat writers really well. So I'm talking Man. guy and here. Yep, and here. So here comes Dan Quinn. I turn around. He has no. He's like has like a. You know, not dressed up, but, you know, a little dressier. No hat. Okay, great. Okay, he sits down. He, they do their thing. An hour, so now he's done. But, like, an hour later, I see him back in the corner of the lobby. Now he's done. He's over, like, sitting at a table on his phone. Now he has a hat on, and it's backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
I, so now we're in the Ritz Carlton. That's like a, a nice little resort. Is it not little? It's a giant, nice, beautiful resort. Yeah. Everybody's kind of doing their thing. It's you're trying to be cool, and he's still got his hat on backwards. But <laughs> in my true, you know, to show you where you know where I am, do I actually go over there and confront him and be a man about it and demand to his face that he? <laughs> no, of course not. I just walk away. And I don't do anything because I'm a coward and I'm going to let him do whatever he wants. Get out of cool. here. And he could, he could, you know, he could get me fired probably just if he wanted to. But well, yeah. he could also, he could also kick your ass. He's not Mike McDaniel. No, no. Yeah. He he is, probably... Let's be honest. I, I would not want to fight Dan Quinn. I would not win. I was going to say, I was going to say, but don't even worry about it. What are you going to confront him about? We can all, you know, complain about the way people look. It, it's a, we don't have to confront him about it. It just looks ridiculous. Like what you're doing is one of my favorite sports. People watching, people watching is some of them. You'll see some of the most curious things that you're like, dude. Like what the hell? Like what's going dude, Jeff, on? What goes through? When your I took mind, that picture, dude. when I took that picture, Jeff, I told Jeff. I think he was looking at me. He's like, shut up. Was he really? And I looked at it. I showed it to him. He's like, shit, he was looking at you. I was, was going to tell like, you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he was happy that I took that picture. Oh, no. Was, Jeff's He's like, over here Jeff's trying to relate like, to the kids, Jeff. Oh, no. And then Jeff tells me, you, should tw you shouldn't you should tweet out that he's here. Just tweet out. At, uh, just tweet out. Uh, Dan Quinn should wear his hat like a like a human, like a normal human being. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, right. So he could come over here and sock me in the face. <laughs> but uh uh our our good uh our good pal moy goes oh my god let's go jeff is the goat jeff now you're, the you goat. guys are finding out what dan and i have known for years jeff is the goat jeff is the best oh so, yeah dude uh, oh yeah tati's I, I mean, burner we can uh i can't put that out there but that's pretty funny that's uh, fact. That that's pretty funny um jeff you know what's funny speaking of harbaugh and all this uh craziness so you heard that new rule about hard knocks that now it's going to be the division. Yeah. So they put bet the AFC West will be the new hard knocks in season. Peyton chiefs, Harbaugh first year coach. Like I honestly, I, I, I tend to agree with this. Why wouldn't, I mean, I know it's uh Tom to Raiders GM, Tom Telesco's worst nightmare, but I'm pretty sure that I, I wouldn't doubt that it's a AFC West. The first one that, uh, that is the in season, Hard knocks. Well, I mean, look at that right there. They're, you got the four teams, and the last one mentioned is the Raiders. So, yeah, you know, like, it's like uh, on, on a lot of the lists of like wacky and weirdo, whatever, in, you know, whatever hard knocks, the Raiders would be the first team mentioned. They actually could be like the fourth team out of it. Yeah, that to me, that makes a ton of sense. I wouldn't be shocked one bit if that happens. What, uh, I mean, it'd be interesting to see kind of the way they operate their first year. Obviously, you have uh, Sean Payton, who it's like they've made him. I mean, they made some of those mistakes before Sean Payton got there. But then Sean Payton kind of overpaid for some of the offensive linemen and some of the players that he has now. So it's going to be interesting to see the way they recoup there. The Chiefs obviously being the Chiefs. And uh, that Tati's burner, that would be interesting. I don't know if it would be a different show or maybe they just kind of all go, be one. It, it maybe has to they all go be 20 and flow. Yeah. 20 yeah, minutes with one, 20 minutes with another, 20 that's minutes going to be. Maybe yeah, split it up that way. Uh, it seemed like to me that it, it, it sounded like it was all going to be one show, like all yeah. of them together. Yeah. Or, or yeah. maybe episode by episode, it switches from the teams, dude. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, the one thing I will say is um, I don't think uh, Coach Harbaugh would be real thrilled about that if it does happen. Yeah, no. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know that he either. wants, especially first year, I don't know that he's going to want a bunch of cameras around. And uh, AFC North would be an interesting one too, Jeff. Oh, 100%. You get oh, Russell yeah. Wilson. You get uh, you get all the drama with uh, what's going on with the Steelers. Then you get the Ravens. Um, and there's just a lot. Like Cleveland. I think Cleveland could have a quarterback controversy between Deshaun Watson and Jameis Winston. Then obviously you have like just the AFC North also is one of those teams where you just have a lot uh, going on. And, and I wouldn't doubt that they would be one of the teams, too, that they would consider. I wonder if uh, they these I wonder if all four teams have to agree or like 50 percent of them have to agree or or what way they're going to do it. But I, I'm really interested to see how this hard knocks. Thing. I mean, I'm, I'm not the world's biggest hard knocks fan. Like no. when they had Rex Ryan on and the way Re Rex Ryan did it. Uh, like that was entertaining. It hasn't been like that. So, 
uh, <laughs> Tatis, you, come on, bro. <laughs> you just sort of drop. You kind of just drop that in there and kind of move. So you, the like Browns, you know how much the Browns are paying Watson. You don't think he? You think he actually can lose his starting job? Well, yeah, because like think about the injury that like he got injured. Well, I mean, last he's year. hurt. He's, if he's been, hurt. That's well, one thing. But if he's but healthy, he's on being hurt. So I feel yeah. like they could. They I could have so. something where yeah, and they. I mean, they got Jerry Judy. They paid him a lot of money. They're paying Amari Cooper a lot of money. Like, you kind of have to be the one that, uh, like, and I understand, like, what you said. They give him a fully guaranteed contract. There's a lot of stuff, I think, Jeff, that we still don't know about what happened with him. So I think there's still a lot going on, and I think he's a little bit distracted as well. And you have this guy coming in that's like, oh, well, I didn't start with the Saints. Uh, I, everybody still remembers, remembers me as a quarterback that had a 30, 30 season, 30 touchdowns, 30 interceptions. But ever yeah. since I got LASIK, I've been better supposedly <laughs> according to him. So I, I just think there's a lot there when it comes to, uh, Cleveland. I, I wouldn't be, I, I wouldn't be, uh, the shoulder saga was odd too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's just a lot of weird stuff that is happening. And I think Cleveland, if they don't win pretty soon, I think they're going to have to blow up the team and, and start over new. Cause uh, I mean, a couple of years ago, they were a couple of plays away from beating the chiefs and making it to the, uh, to the AFC championship. championship. And now all of a sudden, I, I, I don't even know if they're a playoff team now. So that's kind of, they have question marks at the quarterback position and Nick Chubb, what's he going to be yeah, when he knows, comes back? Who knows how he's going to come back? Yeah. back. So I yeah. just think that there's a lot of drama kind of that would uh, make me want to, um, Make me want to do that. I can, I can see that. You're right. The all-in production would be better. Just have to change the name. Get rid of the statement. <laughs> God, you guys are terrible. What's wrong with you people? Uh, <laughs> um, the Chargers own YouTube page. All-in is better than hard knock. Yeah, uh, I don't yeah, know. But that's, I think, but that's, I think that's because you guys are fans of them, and you guys want to see your team in it, but. I don't know. I, yes. I don't know how other people. They, they do. They do a good job of that. They do. They do. Uh, they do really but my thing is, the thing that I hated about Hard Knocks in my mind is that it's so watered down that I feel like they don't show you anything. Like you remember a few years ago with the Raiders, all the Antonio Brown stuff was coming out, and right. we didn't see any of it. So I think a lot of it gets cut on the editing, uh, in the editing room, and it's and it's left on the ground. My thing with All In that pisses me off. I mean, they do a good job and everything else, but. You know, if I see them get their asses handed to them on Sunday, I don't want to see an episode on Tuesday or whenever it drops taking me back to training camp. Like, I hated that stuff. Like, if we're going to do a real, you know, follow the team, then let's follow the team through the good and the bad times in the season. That's the only thing that bothers me. I don't, I don't, well, yeah, some, but you, you can't know. show, like, you really think Tom Bosco wanted them to show oh, the, give access was happening or in the don't give room access. And all that stuff? It's give access or don't give access. It's that easy. Don't take me back it's to training easy, camp. Don't take me back to training camp when Jeff, I saw them a new lose to the Chiefs. Dan the man dude. and Jeff the killer Miller. Damn, let's that's go, actually dude. that's actually let's a really good go. one, Jeff. Yeah. Let's go. You know, it's a, it would be uh, – so that would be really interesting if a team did that. And this would be a team that would do that because they yep. their, their people are talented enough that they could pull that off. Why not? Why not dive into what went wrong and we were terrible – and what, you know, the problem was, exactly. you know, this idea of like this, it's our media. We can't be critical of ourselves. Why not? Like, why? Exactly. why it? I mean, what's it, the harm it, of it? Yeah, the problem, they, the, the situation they have, the all in folks have. And last year, what happened was when the team plays poorly, they kind of have to go away because, you know, they're the they're the teams, you know, they're, it's, they're the media arm of the team and they aren't comfortable showing that stuff. My I guess my question would be, why not? Why why would you show it? Everything's You're, changing. Why not be the first yeah. team that does that? Where and these guys can do it. Show. They got the talent yeah. to do it. They're yeah. they, they're really good at it. They well, would but do they it. Also, but they also have the – but they also, like, what is that thing? Uh, I'm trying to see. Like, they, they're also sure of themselves to where oh, I yeah. think if they let that happen, they wouldn't care. they're fine with it. Like, you know, some yeah. other people want to keep their cards close to the vest. They yeah. like you. You know what I mean, Jeff. Like these guys don't care if that's out there. They're cool with it. They're fine. Like they're like, oh, our life is an open book. We don't care. Other teams and other GMs are kind of like, oh no, we can't show the way the locker room is after this stuff or or any of that. Like you know what I mean. Like they're not um, 
the charger or like this coaching staff is sure of themselves. They're sure of their methods. Sure. They're sure of all this other stuff. Other teams aren't as sure of themselves. So I kind of, uh, and I, I think most importantly, I think most importantly, it would probably either, I don't know if reassure the fans or maybe get more fans because of the authenticity, because I'll tell you from my perspective alone, shout out. He's a, yeah. Uh, from my I've perspective alone, is, <laughs> I've heard that Jeff's killer behind the wheel of his Miata. He yeah, said, don't think that he's me. being a creep. He's like, I only know that because of that one episode with Matt Money and Jeff showing up driving in his car. <laughs> <laughs> what episode is that? I want to see that. And that might be the one where I, I came, I they, I got cut off and disappeared. Then I came back, and for some reason, like I was upside down, like the oh. image of me was upside down. I was sitting in the in the in the parking lot somewhere in my car. So that that might be what he's talking about. But yeah, uh, but no, you're that what that's one thing with this coaching staff that is different from previous coaching staff is these guys they they know what they're doing. Like they they don't think they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing, and one hundred percent. They don't, they wouldn't, you're, you're right, Fernando. They wouldn't care, uh, you know, they wouldn't care about, uh, you know, being exposed or anything. They're going to, they'd let it all yeah. hang out because they, yeah. they know, they know they know what they're doing. And so that's why, you know, a guy like Harbaugh can, he can bring in Nick Hardwick and be like, you know, come, you know, he, he he's not afraid of guys who played in the NFL. Navarro Bowman. He played oh, yeah, former years, player in the NFL for 14 years. He's not, he doesn't care. You know, if you play, you are a great NFL pl player. He has no problem with you coming in his locker room because he, you know, he 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 has the credentials too. So yeah, um, you know, so yeah, I, I think we're onto some. We need to convince the Chargers to do this, and let's get that all in and get some get some real all in content, man. One hundred percent. We'll be the production on crew. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I just, there, I, I'm trying. There, there, that was a joke we were making. I, I, I think. Um, uh, that's my favorite version of Jeff. He ghosted them and reappeared. <laughs> no, that, that, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> um, Dan, you, you were going to get to something. I cut you off. I'm sorry. No, you're good. You're good. I already forgot what it was. So it was about the hard knock and all, or like. Oh yeah, yeah. I was going to say more than anything. Like I think for more people, I don't know if it reassures them or whatever. But at least, you know, I always I never liked it because I felt like my uh, I don't want to be overly critical, but like I always felt like my intelligence was insulted in the sense of like they lose Sunday and I go back to training camp yeah. for the next episode. It's like I, I know what happened on Sunday, dude. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I this isn't going to distract me like I know what's happening. Like so that was always my thing. Like I don't care about like once the season starts training camp and all that. I don't care about it. You might as well delete all that footage. I only want to see what's in Kevin, season. chill, bro. Who wanted to see a yoga team building session after a loss? <laughs> My God. <laughs> uh, no, that um, and that was the reason why they were very reluctant to do much at, later because they knew we can't keep doing this because people, it, real fans, people who know what's going on are going to not even tune in because they're going to be like, "This is garbage." Like, you know, you're you're ignoring the facts here. So that's one hundred percent. That that yeah, that's the problem they had. But like, I think we're onto something here. I think they should just, you know, and you know who it. should voice it. You know who should voice it, right? Oh, could you imagine? <laughs> I'm telling like, you I, that yeah. you're, you. Uh, and I, I, now that you we've gone down that road a little bit, I'm. I, I have to admit, there's a little disappointment that there's no cowboy yet. <laughs> I'm a little. Bro. Like, do you see? Do you see? Look at I have a virtual reality background. When I have the cowboy hat, it doesn't pick it up. So I look <laughs> like I have nothing on my face. Like, yeah, it looks weird. I, trust me, I've tried it. I'm trying to see when I can, you know, kind of get the mini studio back up in my room and everything else. I'm working on that. So, uh, so but at, the, at Radio Row, I had it. At Radio Row, I had it. So it's the color of the hat that throws it off. Or I don't no, know. No, I think how, it's the shape, how big like the and shape. how tall it, the shape of yeah, it. Yeah, the oh. shape of it. Yeah. yeah so that's yeah. why, like, because it's a virtual background, like it picks this <laughs> yeah. up per perfectly and everything else, it can't do it. It would be Mario Lopez or someone instead. <laughs> I'm you, they should, uh, they, they have a good one right here. Um, yeah, some rando. Real quick, uh, Jeff, before I let you, hey, we appreciate you so much for jumping on with us. And yeah, thank you. God, time's flown by. I can't even believe we're, we're at uh, 56 minutes. We're abusing yeah. of Jeff's time, but, uh, Jeff, real quick, uh, this is a question for you and me. How did the staff look from the from a cohesive 
cohesion perspective as the Chargers spiraling from the timeout to Mike uh, Mike's injury and and the Jags game and so on. From my perspective, Jeff, I'll let you answer this after me. A lot of that staff left. You guys have to remember, Ronaldo Hill uh, went to the Dolphins. Then uh, um, Joe Lombardi was fired and, and all that. And it just seemed like from talking to some of the players and other people last year, it just it wasn't – it was a different environment to say the least. It just wasn't the same as it had been before. The 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 What they were basically told wasn't – wasn't coming to fruition, I guess, and there was some frustration levels, and and uh, the team wasn't as united last year as, as it had been the year before. So yeah, there was definitely levels of frustration with everything after uh, after that. But Jeff, you you go ahead. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, we you saw what happened. They won five games, so the, it just you know Corey got hurt, Mike got hurt, the offense that caught the offense tailed off, you know. Uh, Austin Eckler high ankle sprain week one. He never was the same. And then, you know, defensively, they just the whole thing with Staley just did, did not work. And they it was it was too much. They tried to do too much. They, I mean, when you can make Derwin James look that average and not, you know, just not look like Derwin James, that you've done something really, really poor because yeah, I mean, that yeah. guy should stand out. I mean, for that guy not to stand out week in and week out on defense. And in any defense, you've done something really, something really bad has happened. You're really screwing things up. And, you know, we saw Derwin, there were games, you're, he was just another guy out there, you know, and, and what, you know. And you could he, tell he was frustrated about that. Yeah, totally. But totally. he held it in and he kept his cool and he, and he was a good leader about it. But yeah, by the end, you know, he, he was, you know, he admitted, you know, maybe not publicly, but, you know, it was pretty clear he wasn't, he wasn't having fun. It wasn't, you know, obviously they're losing, so that doesn't help. But he wasn't – he had lost a lot of that joy I think he plays with, guys like him play with that they need to have. And he, I think he had lost a lot of that. And I, th- and I think a lot of it was just the strain and stress that they put on him. They just put on a lot of guys on, on that defense because of how they tried to make them play this kind of, you know, it just – it was too complicated. It was too, you know, right – take every call right down to the last – you know, right before the ball snap, they're doing crazy stuff. Guys are looking at each other, they're trying to figure out what's going on. You know, and I, I, I think all that's going to go away now. And uh, hopefully, for the for you know for Derwin's sake, hopefully he can get back to having fun again. And he can, you know, he can start you know playing like Derwin James, and like we know he can play. Like we saw him play, you know, his, his first year, especially his rookie year when he was so good. Uh, last two questions before we let Jeff go, uh, happening April 2nd. That's the first day of, uh, of off season, uh, activity. So that's what, uh, that's what Jim kept on talking about. That's the first day that people get to, or that players get to be there and work out with Ben Herbert and all, all those guys. So, uh, that'll be the first day. And I get, I think we're talking to Jim, uh, and all that after that. So, uh, it'll definitely be interesting. Uh, Jeff, just real quick, how big is the new training and conditioning staff for the Chargers moving forward? You know, it, it, they're getting a lot of hype, that's for sure. So, well, I mean, they paid, they're paying Ben Herbert a ton of money. So, they, uh, you know, Harbaugh is, believes in him that much, and he convinced the Spanoses to believe in him that much, and they're giving him a lot of money. So, uh, they're expecting, I think they're expecting big things from him. Now, the one thing I would c- caution people about, okay, it's football. Guys are going to get hurt. I don't care who your training staff is or who your medical staff is. <laughs> you know, Michigan had injuries last year, you guys. Okay. So don't, don't think that no one's going to get hurt because guys are going to get hurt. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, the we'll, you know, like everything else with this team, we'll see. Cause we don't, until they get out on the field and start playing games, you don't really know what any of this is going to look like, but uh, you know, they're uh, all, all the signs are, are encouraging. Everybody talks up Ben Herbert. You got to be careful with saying Herbert now. With his team, because there's two of them. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, oh yeah. You know Ben Herbert. Every you know, but people are they rave about him. So we'll see. Uh, and I'm sure the players, from what we're told, the players are going to love him. So we'll get a, a better feel of that. You know, once they it's really starting next week, when more players are we're interacting with these guys, you know, day in day out basis and getting actual workouts in with these guys, I think we'll start hearing pretty quickly how much they love him. And you know, he's got this intensity to him. And he passion that he just you know he's just his whole thing it's like you, you know why i haven't even met the guy but i'll guarantee you why herbert why herbert why harbaugh loves 
both Herberts. Ben Herbert is because he's all football. He's all yeah. he's all players. Whatever we can do to make the team better, make the players better. From what I've been told, that's all he cares about is making the players better. And he just, all he cares about is being in the weight room and training and getting these guys right and get their bodies right and all that stuff. And so that's why I'm sure why Harbaugh loves him. And that that's I'm sure that's why the players are going to love him because he, he's going to be their best friend because he's going to help make them better. Jeff, but people expect uh, if there's an injury that Ben Herbert's going to do this. He's going to be able to nurse him back to health, just like Mr. Miyagi uh, to daniel son. So- <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I, I hope, hopefully people are, are being realistic about uh, uh, it. He's probably not going to be able to do that. But uh, <laughs> real quick, uh, before we let you go, uh, just uh, again, I, I keep on saying that. But you know what I hate about this time? I tell Gilbert, I call this weirdo time. Why? Because right now we're in the strangest part. Like you have clowns on on social media, like with check marks and all this stuff that are saying, oh, don't be surprised if Jim Harbaugh trades Justin Herbert and tries to grab J.J. McCarthy with the fifth overall pick. I'm like, like that. And see, that's what I hate about this time right now is that people just start throwing out clown shit. And I'm like, (laughs) that's the reason why he took the job was because of the court. Well, one of the reasons, but Get, like I, I just that's what I hate. I guess about this time is is all that stuff. You know what I mean? I do. It's just it's that it's hype hype season. So everybody's exactly. hyping everything, and you can throw anything out there you want, whether it makes any sense or whether it's even you know allowed. You know, there's people are throwing out stuff that you can't even do like legally. You know, in terms of like CBA stuff, and it's like no, that can't happen because of this or that. So uh, it's it's just that you know that's it's that time of year you can throw anything out there. You get leading up to the draft, you can. Every scenario possible you can concoct, you can put out there, and that's what people love doing it. And it, it, uh, it just you know that's why people love the NFL is they they can talk about it year long, all year round, yeah. and it, it just never goes away. And no matter how crazy or silly or how impossible or ridiculous it is, you, you just throw it out there and you see where it goes. Yeah, you see all the hype up. Hey, do me a favor right now, hype up. Thank Jeff so much for jumping on with us. We love Jeff. Shout Miller. out. This is our guy. Dan, go ahead. I know you want to uh, shout out. Say a little we something appreciate we appreciate the GOAT for coming on this show, spreading his wisdom. You know, you're lucky I don't know your height, weight, and your mile time because that's probably what I would throw out there right now also. <laughs> but shout out to Jeff Miller. Go check him out. at What is it? At Jeff L-A-T? No, Jeff Miller L-A-T. What's your Twitter? Yeah, you had it. Jeff, Jeff Miller L-A-T. L-A Times. There you go. Jeff Miller, LAT, does great work over there. Freaking goat. Knows all about the team. Absolutely amazing. Shout out to you, Jeff. Appreciate you so much. No, I, I love it, man. Love coming on here. Jeff, on Tuesday, I might need a ride up there. And you know who might give me a ride because he's on spring break. Uh... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Go get a meal in person. Go break oh, some bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We yeah. gotta get, we gotta get the Harbaugh, the Harbaugh introduction. Oh, Can you die. imagine if he met Harbaugh? Would like die. that would be the the funniest thing in the world. Yeah, that, that would. I told you about when he met uh, Justin, right? I I think I heard that. Well, so we were at Radio Row, and Justin's walking by, and I had asked Justin if, if. Well, I mean, I had just talked to Justin, and Justin walks by and says, "What's up to Gilbert and myself?" And then he goes. Hey, dude, my name is Justin. And he like shakes Daniel's hand and Daniel goes, oh, crap. <laughs> He's like, hi, how are you doing? <laughs> and then he like walks I was like, by. that's a set of voting. I felt some electricity. <laughs> I felt some electricity. He's I got it going, seen, dude. I had never seen Daniel so quiet. I was like, damn, okay. He really was uh, starstruck right there. That's a son of Odin, dude. So be starstruck too. <laughs> I thought it was, uh, I thought it was funny, but yeah, Daniel may be making the trip up with me. So, uh. So you'll get to see him and you'll get your big hug. But uh, Jeff, yeah. again, we uh, we we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for jumping on, folks. Don't forget to check out all the merch. Uh, Nancy's right. Don't forget the merch, bro. Uh, make sure you guys go check out the merch store. Uh, make sure you guys go. Uh, make sure you guys go check out everything. Um, uh, make sure you guys check out everything in the store. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to be a compa, tell a compa. We appreciate you guys so much. We'll be back next week. Uh, you never know who's going to stop by. Last Two weeks ago, it was Uncle Joe Reedy. Last week, it was Gilbert. 
This week, it's Jeff Miller. You just never know who's going to stop by and talk to us. But, Jeff, thank you so much. We love you. Uh, make sure you guys check out everything. Thank you guys so much. We love you.